Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Grow Med. Today is the day 2 revision of the biochemistry and today we will be discussing about carbohydrates and diseases related to it and the cell organelles and the enzymes. Before watching this video, watch the video of the day 1 and if at all you have watched that video then I hope you guys would have revised the notes and also solved the MCQs. Before watching this video, I suggest you guys to just go through once what you have read yesterday. Just revise it so that it will help you to recall the things which you have read yesterday and also it will make a rhythm and you will come to know today's topics also easily. So let's get started. Yesterday we had discussed about the vitamins, then the rate limiting enzymes all. So today we will discuss about the carbohydrates. So let's see the basic things which are asked from the carbohydrates. First is the classification. So carbohydrates, they are classified into the simple and the complex. Simple means only carbohydrate is present and complex means along with the carbohydrate, there is another group attached like the protein or the lipid. If it is protein attached, then it is called as glycoprotein or proteoglycans. And if the lipid is attached, then glycolipid. Then the simple sugar, it is classified into the monosaccharide, disaccharides and polysaccharide. Monosaccharides, as you can see here, mono means one. Okay, so one molecule will be present. Disaccharide, two molecules will be attached together. And polysaccharides, more number of molecules will be attached together, forming it a long chain. Okay, so in the monosaccharides, based on the functional group, it is again classified into the aldoses or the ketoses. That means if there is aldehyde group attached, then it is called as aldoses. And if it is keto group attached, then it is called as ketosis. So let me give you an example. So glucose, it is in aldose because aldehyde group is attached to it. While fructose, it is in keto, ketosis because a keto group is attached to it. Then let's see the examples of the disaccharides. So disaccharides, these are the maltose, isomaltose, trihalose. In them, there are two glucose molecules forming this substance and differentiating factor between these is the bond number. So for maltose, for example, for maltose, the bond is found between the carbon 1 and the carbon 2. Likewise, for the isomaltose, it is 1 and 4. Okay. And then sucrose, it is formed glucose and fructose and lactose it is formed by the lactose and glucose so a simple one-liner can be asked that sucrose is formed by which of the following molecules or what is the structural formula of the sucrose so it will be fructose and glucose then moving on to the polysaccharides these are classified into homo and hetero homo means the same group okay so the repeating chain of the same groups and hetero means repeating chain of the different groups so the examples are the starch, glycogen and the cellulose. And the heteropolysaccharides, these are also called as glycosaminoglycans or mucopolysaccharides. So you need to learn this whole chart because questions are asked on this that hyaluronic acid forms which of the following or what is content of the connective tissue like that. So it will be the hyaluronic acid. Another variant of this question is that which of the following glycose aminoglycan is present in the cartilage. So it will be chondritin sulfate. So you need to mug up this whole chart. And repeatedly a question is asked on this cornea. So it is a previous year question. Which of the following glycose aminoglycan is present in the cornea. So it is keratin sulfate. So this was about the basics of the carbohydrates which you must learn. Now let's look at some important pathways of the carbohydrate metabolism. The first is the glycolysis, which is the breakdown of the glucose. So as you can see this chart, this chart is of the glycolysis. There's no need to by heart this whole chart because it will be time consuming and we don't have much time left. So only these points like the site, it occurs in the cytosol, the rate limiting enzyme, which is the phosphofructokinase 1. Then there are three irreversible reactions present in this and you need to remember them. The hexokinose or the glucokinose, that is the first step and then the rate limiting enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 and the pyruvate kinase. So these are the three irreversible steps. So all except kind of a question can be asked that which of the following are the irreversible steps of the glycolysis except. Then moving on, the net gain of the ATP, it will be, if it is aerobic, then it will be 7 ATP gained and if it is anaerobic, then 8 ATP will be gained. That is 8 ATPs will be formed. Then moving on, gluconeogenesis, so it is formation of the glucose and the points which you must remember from this 
flow chart is that the three irreversible steps the pyruvate carboxylase sorry the pyruvate carboxylase this one and then fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase and glucose 6 phosphatase so these are the three irreversible steps so these are catalyzed by other enzymes and the rest all these enzymes are same so i have attached this chart just to give you an idea of the substrates and the enzyme so while reading you do not get confused that's it there's no need to read this whole chart then moving on we will discuss about the glycogen storage diseases so it is a must to do topic and one question is a compulsory from this topic so before uh, discussing about the glycogen storage disease let's look at the glycogenolysis and the glycogenolysis so here you can see here that this flow chart it is the metabolism of the glycogen to form glucose so this is the glycogen and it undergoes various steps to form glucose one phosphate and if there is deficiency in various enzymes during this process then there will be certain diseases occurring so there's no need to by heart this chart also only you need to remember the enzymes these enzymes and if there is deficiency what kind of diseases will be caused so let's look at them so it is classified into the six type and the names like the type 1 von Gierke type 2 pompous disease so here is the enzyme deficient then you need to remember certain points like uh, the glucose 6 phosphatase is deficient in the von Gierke's and it is the most common variety seen in the children whereas the most variety seen in the adult is the McArdle disease and an important factor by which you can come to know that they are speaking about the McArdle will be the exercise intolerance because there is deficiency in the muscle glycogen phosphorylase so whenever there will be heavy exercise the patient will feel fatigue. So if a case is given then they will be describing the features like the exercise intolerance and he is an adult and there is fatigue and if it is a children uh, like this uh, the von Gierke's disease glycogen 6 phosphatase it will be there will be hepatomegaly because this occurs in the liver so liver is affected in this case and there will be hypoglycemia then the type 2 pompous disease it is also and the lysosomal storage disorder because this acid maltase it is present in the lysosomes and when it is deficient then lysosomes are affected so mostly all organs will be affected in case of the pompous disease then in case of the Coris and the anderson the liver will be affected so the symptoms uh, clinical features will be like hepatomegaly and then hypoglycemia the same like the type 1 so these were some points about the glycogen storage diseases so one-liners are asked clinical case questions are asked so you need to mug up all these points then moving on let's look at other diseases which are related to the carbohydrates so it is galactosemia and the famous question asked from the galactosemia is the enzyme deficient so it is the galput enzyme which is galactosemia Tidyl phosphatidyl uryl transferase something like that okay so there's a long name so you need to look at that name also and uh, this enzyme is deficient so it will cause features like jaundice hepatomegaly oil drop cataract and reducing sugar positive in the urine so if a clinical case is given then these features will be described and the enzyme deficiency is the galput so, so there is another disease related to the lactulose metabolism and that is the lactulose intolerance in this there is deficiency of the lactase due to which the lactose cannot be broken down into the glucose and the galactose so whenever there is a baby when he consumes milk then he will present to you with the features like the osmotic diarrhea frothy stool and bloating and investigation of choice is the hydrogen or the methane breath test so whenever these features are described in the question then you need to think in terms of lactulose intolerance lactose intolerance okay then moving on then fruit juice consumption so in the question they can describe that after consumption of the fruit juice the patient presents with features like vomiting jaundice then hepatomegaly and irritability so what which of the following is the enzyme deficient or which of the following is the diagnosis so if they are asking about the diagnosis then it will be the fructose intolerance and if they ask about the enzyme then it will be the aldolase b and if they want to ask about a simple one-liner then the question can be like this that uh, which of the following enzymes is deficient in fructose intolerance so it will be the aldolase b so the format of the question can vary but the content will not vary the content will be same so you need to prepare yourself while studying that whatever mcq will be asked you will be able to solve it
then moving on so there was another previous year this is a previous year question and the question was asked a simple one liner that which of the following enzyme is deficient in the essential fructose urea so it was the fructokinase deficiency and you can uh, by looking at the name you can come to know that what kind of disease it is so it is fructose urea so due to deficiency of this fructokinase the fructose metabolism does not occur and it comes into the urine then moving on let's look at some mucopolysaccharide diseases because this is also an important and this also you can mark as one question compulsory so go through all the fmg papers you will find one question on this mucopolysaccharidosis and the glycogen storage diseases so it is a very very important topic and a must do you cannot miss this so the mucopolysaccharidosis there are various types but the to main from the FMG point of view, the type 1 and the type 2. The type 1, it is called as the hurler disease and 2, hunter disease. So questions are asked on its enzymes deficient, that is, in hurler, it is alpha L iodinase deficiency, also remembered as the iodinase deficiency. In case of hunter, it is iodinate sulfate defi deficiency. Also, the hurler, it is an autosomal recessive condition and the hunter, auto X linked recessive and the clinical features are in both the cases there will be coarse facial features described but the differentiating factors is this corneal clouding and if it is present then go with the hurler disease and if it is not present then go with the hunter disease and also in the hurler disease there will be rarely body inclusions seen so these were some important disorders from the carbohydrates which you must learn then moving on there are certain tests done for the carbohydrate so let's look at them iodine test it is done for the starch then benedict test done for the reducing sugar the molish test it is positive when the carbohydrate is having more than five carbon carbons okay then selvinov it is for the keto sugar but for its differentiates between the monosaccharide and the disaccharide and if it is positive then it will be the monosaccharide so it is positive test for the monosaccharides then moving on this is an important test because this was asked in the past years the god and the pod test it is done to estimate the blood glucose levels so this was about the carbohydrates which you must learn this much is actually more than enough so this is more than enough for the fmge because usually questions are asked only from this content then let's look at some other things uh, the cell organelles so this is also an important topic so questions are asked on the organelle function and its markers. So let's look at them. This chart also you need to buy heart. So the nucleus, its function is the storage of the genetic material that is the DNA and the markers are the polymerase, DNA and the RNA. Likewise for the mitochondria, it is energy production that is the ATP synthesis and the marker is succinate dehydrogenase. Then ribosome protein synthesis and it is the RNA. The Rough endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum, it is classified into the rough and the smooth. So the function of both is different, but their marker is the same. That is the glucose 6-phosphatase. Then moving on, Golgi apparatus, protein transportation and export. So its marker is galactosyl transferase. Then peroxisomes, they help in the lipid breakdown and redox reactions. And their marker is the catalyst. So here this is... Uh, the important thing which you must remember that peroxisome carries these pathways it causes alpha oxidation of the fatty acid and oxidation of the very long chain fatty acid and synthesis of the plasmalogen so all all of the following are except regarding the peroxisome except the kind of a question can be asked from this then moving on the lysosome causes the protein destruction and its marker acid phosphatase then cytoskeleton cell movement and intracellular transport cell membrane and this function and this is its marker and for like cytoplasm lactate dehydrogenase so this was a previous year question okay so so this chart you need to buy heart then moving on let's look at the enzymes so enzyme also one question is a must because this topic is usually asked in integration with the pharmacology and the PSM also so image based question are usually asked and I have seen in almost all the uh, FMG papers this enzyme question is there. So this much from the enzymes is more than enough. So let's look at them. So this graph, this graph is known as the Michaels Mendelin graph and it states that there is in, if there is increase in the substrate then it states that the substrate concentration it is directly proportional to the velocity. 
and the questions are asked on this enzyme inhibitors so let's look at them enzyme inhibition it is classified into the two types reversible and the irreversible and the reversible is again classified into the competitive and non-competitive so what happens in the non-competitive competitive is that the vmax it is same but the km increases and in the non-competitive the vmax is same sorry guys i've made a mistake here i've written it uh, I have written it ulta so the v max this one decreases whereas the km it remains the same in the non-competitive okay so image based questions are also asked and this uh, thing which is there na same decreasing increasing so it is very uh, like a bit confusing so you can remember that one parameter is same so the same parameter don't remember it because it is the same so just keep in mind that in competitive the km increases and in non-competitive the v max decreases then uh, image based questions are asked giving this image they will ask you which type of inhibition it is like see this red one this one is the normal one so normally it will be like this and the green one it represents competitive inhibition so in the exam the any one image uh, any one line will be given either the competitive or the non competitive so if you're not able to remember this image easily and if it makes you confusing then there's one trick to remember that if it is competitive inhibition then it will form an x so these both lines will be crossing and forming an x then mark the answer as the competitive inhibition and if these lines do not cross and they start from one point and go like this forming an angle like this then think in terms of non competitive inhibition then the next image so this is the michaels mendelian graph and in this the normal enzyme will be like this but in case of the competitive the enzyme the graph will become like this and in the non competitive the graph will be hyperbola type okay so this image is more important from the fmg point of view because image based questions is asked on this so that's it in this video guys so we have covered the day 2 of the biochemistry so read all these points practice these things mug up the things and also solve the mcqs so you can solve the mcqs from the fmg solution or the marrow q bank thank you so much for watching this video so tomorrow we will be doing for the day 3 and we will be discussing mostly about the amino acid its structure then diseases and then uh, we will be doing the molecular biology so so let's meet tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock till then study well and together we will clear this exam this time thank you so much for watching this video share this video with your friends and if you are new to gromed then don't forget to subscribe to gromed and tap the bell icon to get st regular study tips thank you so much bye bye